You know, from time to time, we do true uh, crime podcasts on this channel. This is an indirect request. Several months back, one of my friends from Ontario said, Oh, I see you're doing a lot of cases like Alan Legere and some of the last people hung across Canada, but have you done something on the Rolex killer? And I said, a Rolex killer? It doesn't ring a bell. No, he said, look it up. I apologize to that gentleman for being late with requests. But today we're going to be talking about one of the most interesting criminal cases in Canadian history. It's the Albert Johnson Walker case. Now, Albert Johnson Walker, born 1946. He was known as the Rolex killer before being caught. He was a Canadian criminal currently serving a heavy prison term for embezzlement and murder. Now, born August 9, 1946, in Paris, Ontario, otherwise known as David W. Davis, otherwise known as Roland Joseph Platt, and a Rolex killer. He is noted for murdering, murdering an Englishman whose identity he had been assuming and for posing for years as though his daughter were his wife. Now, again, originally from Paris, he was a high school drop up, a dropout. After doing numerous odd jobs, he was eventually hired as a bank teller for a trust company. He also started filing other people's income tax returns. He eventually quit his job at the trust company some two years later to establish his own freelance bookkeeping business, which was called Walker Financial Services Incorporated. Now, in over a decade, Walker Financial grew into a six-branch operation with about 30 workers. In 86, a stock deal that Walker had invested in collapsed. As a mortgage worker and financier, he defrauded about 70 Canadians of a grand total of $3.2 million. In 1990, he fled to Europe with the second of his three daughters. And in 1993, Walker was charged in Canada with 18 counts of fraud, theft, and money laundering. Over a period of time, Walker eventually became Canada's most wanted criminal and the second most wanted by Interpol. Now, Walker eventually made his way to Harrogate in North Yorkshire, where he lived with his daughter, who was posing as his wife. During this time, that daughter had two children, the paternity of whom has not been revealed. He changed his name to David Sibandi and became a, began a business career with television repairman Ronald Joseph Platt. Now, Platt, who was raised in Canada, wished to return to his home country. Walker bankrolled his but claimed he needed Platt's driver's license, signature stamp, and birth certificate for the business. When Platt left for Canada in 92, initially with the intent of permanently settling there, Walker assumed his identity. Now, Platt was out of money and returned to England in 1995. Walker took Platt out on a fishing trip on the 20th of July, 96, where he murdered him, weighed him down with an anchor, and dumped his body in the sea. Two weeks later, the body was discovered in the English Channel by fisherman John Kopik, with a Rolex wristwatch being the only identifiable object on the body. Since the Rolex movement had a serial number and was engraved with special markings every time it was serviced, British police traced the service records from Rolex. Ronald Joseph Platt was identified as the owner of the watch and the victim of the murder. In addition, British police were able to determine the date of death by examining the date on the watch calendar. And since the Rolex movement had a reserve of two to three days of operation when inactive, it was fully waterproof and was fully waterproof to enable to determine the time of death within a small margin of error. Walker was apprehended shortly thereafter. Now, in the spring of 98, Walker's preliminary hearing was held in the village courtroom in Tynemouth, England. On April 27, 98, he pled not guilty in, the, in his murder trial in the English city of Exeter. He was found guilty in 98 and received an automatic life sentence for murder. Had Walker not been convicted, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office would have transferred him back to Canada to face his fraud charges. Now, on February 22, 2005, the Globe Mail reported that Walker would be transferred to the Canadian prison where he faced additional charges of fraud, theft, and money laundering. Now, on July 23, 2007, Walker was sentenced in Kingston to four years for fraud and one year concurrent for violations of the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act of Canada. He started serving his life sentence in Canada at the infamous Kingston Penitentiary. When that prison was permanently closed in 2013, he was uh, transferred to a prison in British Columbia. Now, 
many medias have covered this uh, case and bear with me because you might have read some of the books or maybe uh, wanting to read the tomes later on it's quite interesting now in 1998 a book detailing the story of Albert Walker A Hand in the Water The Many Lies of Albert Walker by award winning Toronto uh, star journalist Bill Schuller was published by HarperCollins now in 1998 a second book detailing Walker's story Nothing, Nothing Sacred The Many Lies of Betrayals of Albert Walker by award-winning Toronto Sun journalist Alan Kames was published by McClellan Bantam Incorporated. Now, a made-for-TV movie, a.k.a. Albert Walker, documenting Walker's crimes and eventual arrests was released in 2002. Now, in 2002, Walker's wife, Barb Nee McDonald, authored a book entitled Dancing Devil, My 20 Years with Albert Walker, detailing the life of Walker leading up to his departure from Canada. Now, a documentary detailing the crime called Interpol Investigates Body Double was made by National Geographic. Now, a Forensic Files episode titled Time Will Tell details Ronald Platt's murder investigation and Albert Walker's capture. Now, a play by Peter Cawley's Stolen Lives, the Albert Walker story, before, uh, performed at the Blight Festival in Blight, Ontario in 2000. Now, the background behind Walker's arrest in England was featured in an edit episode called The Almost Perfect Murder in the doc series Real Crime. Now, in 2010, British soap opera Coronation Street aired a storyline that bore a striking resemblance to the Albert Walker Ronald Platt murder, in which character John Steepe, after being struck off the teaching register for kidnapping a schoolgirl, steals the identity of a former colleague named Colin Fishwick in order to once again gain employment as a teacher. Fishwick had immigrated to Canada, allowing Stape to freely assume his identity. But Fishwick would soon make an unexpected U-turn and chose to return to live in the UK, uncovering Stape's deception and ultimately dies during a confrontation with Stape. Although not directly responsible for his death, as Fishwick had been a victim of a savage beating by another man in an unrelated incident just days prior to confrontation and has succumbed to his injuries, Stape chose not to report his death, knowing he could easily be shown to have a motive for murdering Fishwick and buries his body in construction site in order to maintain his deception. Not going to give away the conclusion of that plot, I'll let you find the Coronation Street uh, back episodes. Now, there was some talk there was going to be a mini-series of this, uh, probably on Netflix in 2022. I haven't heard too much about it, but it all comes down to this, ladies and gentlemen. The perfect crime is never the perfect crime. There, there's something could give it away. Uh, when you assume an identity, you have to think so much. But when it comes down to a watch to decide, especially something as, uh, what do you call, professionally made and professionally what they call uh, upheld in relation to repair like Rolex. Uh, if you think you're smarter than anybody else, you're going to be caught in the crime. There's a case of a uh, pimp and drug dealer in Northern Brunswick that uh, came to light a number of years ago. Actually, he's my great uncle. Uh, he first started in his profession 40 years before he was caught. And while he was caught, he got sloppy. He tried to expand into uh, human trafficking. And uh, what happened uh, late 2000s in Northern New Brunswick, uh, various uh, Joint Forces Operation or GFOs left over from the biker wars in Quebec and New Brunswick of the late 1990s, 2000 were still active. And he basically was, not say he was stung, but he basically overthought his hand. When you play cards, ladies and gentlemen, if you have three of a kind, Keep a kicker like a king or an ace because it gives it away that you might have only two pair. Then you show the three of a kind. You have to think your hand. But with the Walker case, he not only overthought his hand, he only had four cards in his hand. The fifth card was a Rolex, and he misplayed that Rolex. Anyway, so if you like what we're doing with our True Crime Podcast, give us a like and let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. I know I've been doing a lot more sports podcasts recently, but I like to present my True Crime Podcast. Being an investigative reporter in New Brunswick for a number of years makes me long for a time where it took nine years to complete a story and investigation. I'm dealing with one cold case now, ladies and gentlemen, that dates back for me 37 years. you got to be patient to bring the walkers of this planet to justice. Have a good day. Bye.